Glassmaking dates back more than 40 centuries. In the late 1800s, glassmakers created something spectacular, glass that was both milky and translucent. They called it opalescent glass. Like its namesake, the opal gemstone, its beauty lies in the way it magically catches the light. Opalescent glass is a semi-transparent glass accented with a solid color or a swirling mix of colors. Glassmakers create it by melting minerals such as silica sand, soda ash, dolomite, limestone, and floor spar. Adding recycled glass helps speed up the melting process and stretches costly raw materials further. They color the mix with pigments, in this case cobalt oxide, which gives a distinctive blue tint. A hoist then lifts the raw ingredients, called batch, up to the mixer, which has two chambers. Ingredients flow from end to end between them, thoroughly blending the batch. The blended batch now goes via wagon to the beehive, a furnace that contains 12 ceramic pots. The furnace man shovels the batch into a pot to melt at a searing 1426 degrees Celsius. He pushes any spills back into the pot, then, to control the temperature inside, closes up the pot's mouth. Twenty-four hours later, workers gather the glowing molten glass. With only seconds to spare, they hurry to the mixing table, keeping the glass in motion to prevent it from cooling unevenly on the way. It's critical they cool off the ladles between each use, or the next gather of glass will stick to the ladle surface. The ladles they use vary in size, holding between 2 and 18 kilograms of molten glass. Workers pour as many as five different ladles at once to make a single color. The mixing table is where the magic happens. The table man picks up one gather of burning molten glass, then another, then skillfully blends them together using a steel fork. He then flips the molten glass into a rolling machine, evening it out as it squeezes through the rollers. Out comes a sheet about 2 meters long and 3 millimeters thick. Every 90 seconds, workers fill their ladles with 1200 degrees Celsius molten glass. Mixing the molten glass on the table helps cool it and blend the colors. This temporarily alters its appearance, but not its final color. The table man separates the glass sheet from the table surface, forcing out any trapped air bubbles and further cooling the glass. The sheet now goes into a leer, an oven that anneals the glass, cooling it evenly to prevent it from cracking. From there, it's on to the trimming table. Workers wear protective clothing to handle the razor-sharp edges, still hot to the touch. Cutting the glass sheets is a delicate two-man job. They must work in sync to keep pace with the sheets that keep on coming. A single pot produces about 25 sheets over 24 hours. That's 300 sheets a day from just one 12-pot furnace. Using a carbide-tipped cutter, the workers score the glass, then snap apart the pieces. Standard 81 centimeter square sheets. They set aside the excess glass to remelt it in a new batch. Finally, they load the sheets into crates and ship them all over the world. Just look how artists use opalescent glass to create a feast of pattern, color and light. Like a painting, only more fragile.